And we just uh, bless our Jewish brothers and sisters out there. I'm going to put my prayer show on and, pr and uh, pray immediately because I have a word from the Lord. All glory be to God. It came this morning, actually. I'll explain what happened with Chris too and Chester before I read it. But the word came this morning. This one is powerful. I mean, they're all powerful, but this one's got a tone to it. You know, there are some words from the Lord, they have a tone. And so this, uh, when you hear it, you'll understand what I am talking about. So hello, hello. Thank you to our moderators who are on there. We so appreciate you being on to help me do what I need to do for the Lord. So let's pray. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord, we come before you. We praise you. You are almighty God. You are high and lifted up. You are far above every power, principality, and might. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Do your name. Father, we humble ourselves before you. Let us become less so you become more in our lives. Acknowledging you sent your son, Yeshua, Jesus, to the earth, the earth to be the spotless lamb, to be the Passover lamb, to be the sacrifice, to purchase us back to you. And he did so on and nailed to a cross. So we would not have eternal separation from you. And when he said it is finished, we were purchased back to you, Father God, through a relationship with Jesus Christ. We praise you. He rose again in three days, ascended back into heaven, took his rightful place at the right hand of the Father, where he rules and reigns forevermore. And I declare that Jesus is Lord. He is King of kings and he is Lord of lords. And I honor that sacrifice before you. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, you would loose and send your holy warring angels and holy angels of all rankings and divisions to surround this property, this place, this home, this broadcast to make a hedge, a shield of the name of Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit to move and to flow and to fill this place and to saturate the atmosphere. Father, lead and guide us in all wisdom, counsel, might, power and the reverential fear of the Lord. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of almighty God, all the glory for yourself. We are merely the clay. You are the potter. You're the author and finisher of our faith. We are created beings that were created to serve and glorify you. Your word says, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. We praise you this day, Lord. We honor you this day. You are awesome. You are mighty father. And the places from which it came from father God to be blocked from returning or have anything sent in its place in Jesus name. Father, we praise you for this day, Lord. Let your name above all be glorified through this. I pray in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Okay. So as you can see, Wally's cage is in back of me, but Wally is at the other house. So if you have not seen the video that we posted of Chris playing the piano, which is a miracle in itself that with his type of energy, like injury, he can play it all. All the animals came and ventured from all over the house and gathered around him at the piano. We posted the video of this. It is very uplifting. It was an amazing moment. And uh, I happened to get it on film. I just happened to hit record when I saw him playing, not knowing the animals were going to react that way. So please go uh, and watch it if you can. I think it will just touch your heart. It touched mine. And we are just humbled and honored that the Lord allows us to take care of his creatures and do his will. Okay. I'm going to tell you about Chris and, Ch uh, Chris and Chester, and then I'm going to read the word from the Lord. But first, I want to read this adorable letter. This was drawn by a 12-year-old little girl named Megan. And, of course, there's Noble, sound asleep, as Noble loves to do. And that's Duchess. And she drew another pig. Could a third pig be coming? We shall see. But this is what she writes. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm 12. And I thought you would like a picture I drew of Noble and Duchess. I gave her a crown because she's a little queen. But I tried to create a picture I saw of Noble. But I want to say thank you because my mom started watching you a while ago. And I saw some of the videos. And you helped me open my eyes a little bit. And you also helped me find a better relationship with God. I did have a good one, but you helped me strengthen it. And you gave me some encouragement to get baptized at my church because I saw that you baptized people and I felt I was ready for that. So thank you. And I hope your animals are doing good. Sincerely, Megan. And she gave me permission to read it. So Megan, thank you so much. I absolutely love this picture. You drew Noble so well, especially. Um, that's just his favorite thing is to be on his bed asleep. So thank you, thank you, thank you, little Megan. God bless you. I love animals. I get a real kick out of it. Um, also, Chris and Chester, my goodness, was yesterday crazy. I mean, 
I always know when a big breakthrough is about to happen because the enemy gives a tell. Now, a tell, for those of you who know who, uh, you know, in the world of playing cards, and I only know this because my father, when I was growing up, did this, uh, basically is you give away your position. And when it's a tell, and I know something big is about to break through, and I need to get myself ready before the Lord. So yesterday, Chester had to be taken back to the hospital. He had ketones in his urine. For those of you who are diabetic, you know what I'm talking about. He was lethargic. Uh, his insulin was was not bad. So I took his blood sugar. It wasn't bad. They admitted him. They um, got Dr. Jason on the case. He is the specialist there. I spoke to him this morning. He said, Chester is a difficult case because what happens with cats that are diabetic is they also fight pancreatitis. And so you need an anti-inflammatory for the pancreatitis, right? But in giving an anti-inflammatory throws off the insulin. So I think they're working on juggling and changing his insulin and introducing a small amount of anti-inflammatory to try to regulate. He is also on anti-nausea medication because uh, pancreatitis can discourage one from eating. I had it when I listened as well for that. And they said, this is what happens with diabetic cats. So praise God that Chester was brought to us because Chester needs a lot of care. And besides that though, Dr. Jason said, Chester's good. He's got a good heart, good lungs, good, good vitals. So praise God for that. So please pray for Chester. We're trusting the Lord to really touch Chester and heal him. And, uh, simultaneously at the same time yesterday. So thank you, Rebecca, for taking Chester to the animal hospital because I had a situation with his mouth is so stitched up in the back. I can't even tell you, um, we had to keep putting gauze in his mouth last night. I had a surgeon when I spoke to him said, Amanda, all I can tell you is when I got in there and got into the bone, it was an absolute mess. He said, what was going on in your husband's mouth? Now that could be partly too, because of um, what he's been through. He had issues with his teeth before the brain injury. Uh, so he is there. I have people with him who are looking after him. Praise God. So please pray for Chris. No complications, no seizures, no complications from the brain injury. Uh, so yesterday, let me tell you, if you don't think I have crazy days and you think my life is hunky dory, it is far from it. Uh, you never know what's going to happen with the animals. You never, I never know what's coming with my husband, Chris, unless of course the Lord tells me, which sometimes he does. Uh, and so basically yesterday was really a test, but you know what? That was a tell. It's a tell in a way from the enemy that he is trying to make a bunch of noise and confusion and problems. And that's only part of it. What I'm telling you, uh, in order to try to stop what the Lord is doing. So I watch this and I go, you know what, Lord time to resist. Time to resist the enemy and he shall flee from me. So this is what we're doing today. We are on resisting and uh, and giving the word of the Lord because the enemy always gets into a tizzy when the Lord gives me one of these words. Now, I did tell you I was waiting on the Lord. Remember just, I don't know, about four days ago, I told you I was waiting on the Lord uh, and it's got to be in his timing because I want it to be his words, not mine. Finally, this morning, I woke up uh, way before Chris and I went into prayer. And I felt the presence of the Lord enter the room. Now you get to know the presence of the Lord. Uh, and praise the Lord, this word came forth. So let me bring it up. And I'm going to read it. All glory be to God. And this is what it says. Praise be to the Lord of hosts, maker of heaven and earth, maker of the stars and the times and seasons. For your name is glorified throughout the earth. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And to his kingdom, there is no end. I have of suspicion that the reason why that comes first is first of all, God has to be praised first. Secondly, that I'm hearing what is being spoken in heaven about him by the angelic hosts. Uh, what, you know what I mean? Sometimes people have heard the Lord has opened their ears. And they've been able to hear the singing that goes on in the heavenlies. So I think this is just the way he's being praised in the heavenlies. And I happen to be hearing it at that moment. And God has to be praised and glorified first before we go into it. So th there is an order. God is a God of order. And this is the order. And the spirit of the Lord says this day, let God arise and let his capital enemies be scattered. For this is a time of great scattering, says the Lord, of great scramble. This is a time where monopolies of the wicked shall and will be broken up, says the Lord. 
And says the Lord of hosts, I am a God of mercy. However, capital, I am also a God of justice, of order, and of righteousness. In the world of socials, I think he's talking about social media, what they have said, what they have done has become a stench in my nostrils, says the Lord, for their words are nothing more than clanging noise. Meaningless, substantless, railing accusations, says the Lord. For when Michael was contending for the body of Moses, he dare not, that's all capitalized, bring a railing accusation, but said the Lord rebuke you, capitals. He's quoting from the book of Jude, the Lord. The railings are going to derail during this time. Their ramblings have begun their downward spiral. And says the Lord of hosts, in this season, I am setting things straight and setting another in ways I, the Lord God, never desired. But men have mixed tonics that do not glorify me, that actually raise up thorns and brambles to coil around the things men should truly concern themselves with. And says the spirit of the Lord this day. I in this season shall do much pruning for much has overgrown and vines have coiled around it. They are not who you think they are, says the Lord. This sentence shall ring true to many as the veil is removed. The filters that's capitalized are removed and the show is removed. And truly what men have kept hidden and locked up in their closets or what is buried under the rubble of so much anger, resentment, greed, jealousy, the emotional wrecks that have become overgrown weeds. I, the Lord in this hour and commanding that which has been locked up in a way and hidden to be opened and marched out before the people. And says the Lord of hosts, be careful and considerate what and who you believe, because motives are very capital impure and desperation has set in a name for themselves shall they make, but it shall be them naked and exposed on the ash heap of their own making. As I, the Lord now set my capital purifying fire to it and truly burn away all the mess that men have made of their lives. Finger pointing shall and will make a very large U-turn right back onto the accusers, the placators, the prognosticators, the conflicted men who have wandered down dark paths with dark thoughts and influences that now think they can accurately speak on matters from my throne, says the Lord of hosts. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, the clock is ticking and there shall be a big bang that's capitalized since science has so twisted this term. However, says the Lord, there shall be a bang. This one shall be felt across multiple states and reported widely as the time has come for I, the Lord, to allow their own explosiveness to befall them. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, kings going to war all for convoluted, corrupt reasons. Listen to what the Lord says here. A little bit of right being mixed with much that is still wrong. I, the Lord, see into the depths of those long overdue to change has been a driving motivation and such. However, says the Lord, when kings go to war, my word, says the Lord, first Samuel, Saul was a tormented, conflicted man. And when it came to following my capital commands, it was a slippery slope. The Amalekites, says the Lord, the line of Haman was so birthed. Saul did a little bit of right and mixed it with a whole lot of wrong. When he disobeyed direct and specific orders from me, the Lord, his God. And so the kingdom was torn away from him and the spirit of the Lord departed from him. His days were numbered as the paranoia and tormented covering so set in and Saul went into a tailspin. A whirlwind of a tailspin, says the Lord of hosts, a sand whirlwind you shall see, historic, enormous to confirm what has been spoken this day. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, during the time of Passover, there shall be a great shaking where the ground sh sleeping awake. Slumber is departing as rude awakening so set in. A surprise for leadership in many nations shall leave many baffled <clears throat> and scratching their heads as in experiments that they mixed, making a blasphemous cup of iniquity that now must be poured out. And says the spirit of the Lord this day. Goliath fell when kings went to war by the unlikeliest of men, a brazen young shepherd boy named David with a stone and a sling. And so what was laughed at and ignored as a threat was so the downfall of the champion of the Philistines. Their champion is falling, says the Lord, in the unlikeliest of ways. The intel is being mixed with lies to ensnare and get those to get the eyes of the people elsewhere. 
Come unto me truly and surrender, and I will show you the keys and the doors to which they go. You shall see snowfall in a very unlikely capital place as the earth is being cleansed and purged, as the enemy attempts to get ahead of his appointed time. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, they are in the press in this nation. The old capital wineskins must go capitalized. They are ensnared in a press of their own making. And now as well, the press capital shall press them. So the press, I think he's talking about the media. The press shall press capitalize them to attempt to save the empires and towers man so built. Meaning that he, they're, they're going to sell them out. I think. High up in this nation, one was paid off to make certain issues go away and attempt to scrub the most damning of evidence as fools, says the Lord. You think, and he puts a question mark there, like he's one, like, why are you even doing this? I'll say, it says the Lord, you think you are so putting your thumb in the dam to stop the leak? You have made a mistake and underestimated who I am that's capitalized. Confirmation shows sit are destroyed. The hour is approaching midnight where am, that's capitalized, the Alpha and Omega. And I will sink their ships. And the spirit of the Lord says this day. There is another. Now, now I want you to listen to what the Lord says here. And the spirit of the Lord says this day. There is another trump in whose heart I have searched. Another trumpet. For I, the Lord, have found something special in the one named Eric. Stability and strength, wisdom and humbleness. I, the Lord, have anointed him for a high position in this land, and I am opening the doors for the right people to make a hedge around him of wisdom, of counsel. I am drawing him in and over that experienced. He shall know, capitalize me, for I am the Lord his God, and I have anointed him for a special purpose in this land. His wife is so crowned with wisdom, and their marriage shall and will be protected through this. Watch what I, the Lord, so do as I have anointed others as well for high positions and close proximity to him. Just watch what I, the Lord, thy God, do for man thinks they know. However, I, the Lord, only know the beginning from the end. He only knows. A table is about to be completely turned over. The money changers are being chased from the temple. The Ahabs and Jezebels are being thrown out of their seats. For I, the Lord, have intentionally put poor counsel in the mouths of their advisors who shall fall on the hill. For I, the Lord, have spoken it forth and it shall be so. And says the spirit, hear ye, O inhabitants of the earth. The Lord this day has declared his intentions and the orders have been given to the captain of the army of the Lord of hosts to go forth throughout the earth and strike the wicked, their empires, their towers, their fortunes, their treasures, their storehouses and their lockboxes. I am God. There is no other capitalized. Serve me, not man. Look to me, says the Lord, not man. For in this hour, there are worthy vessels. I am so filling with my words and announcements to declare before the people. And in this hour, the vessels that have willfully become chipped and cracked and brittle shall break. For I, the Lord, will not have my name used for a gender bitterness. Oh, you shall have a name, says the Lord, but it shall not be the one you pursued of your own skewed desires. For I, the Lord, am making a statement in this hour with two exclamation points. Cleave unto me, seek me for answers, and I will show you and take you deeper with me. That's capitalized in this season. Thus says the Lord of hosts in the name of Jesus Christ, who rules and reigns at my right hand. Praise the Lord. All glory be to God. Uh, that was a very sobering word. We will put this up on the blog. Amanda Grace, the number four him dot blogspot dot com. Uh, so we will have it up in the next day or so, and you can go there and print out a copy of it. There is nothing charged for that blog. You can freely go get the teachings. You can get the prophetic words from the Lord. Keep them, pray, test the spirit, watch what happens, because it's not that the Lord is not speaking. It's that he needs the right heart to listen. You see, when I'm listening for what the Lord has to say, it's not what I want to write. It's what the Lord has to say. He's the God of the universe. He's the God of the entire earth. He is on the throne, which means he has a lot to say about different matters all over the earth. It can't be my agenda of tunnel vision with just one thing. You see, it has to be 
what the Lord wants to say from his throne about what is going on throughout the earth, uh, not just in this nation, because what goes on throughout the earth may affect this nation and vice versa. So we need to understand that, that when we listen for the Lord, it's about what he wants to say. And I'm going to give you an example. Yesterday, the Lord said to me, Rwanda. Rwanda is a nation in Africa. Never heard before Rwanda, but he said it. Rwanda is very far from here. The Lord still has concern with it, though. So watch for something just really big to come out of that nation. Big news to come out of the nation of Rwanda and the area of the Congo as well. Uh, the Lord is doing something there as well. So just watch for that. And you see, and that is, you know, that is very far away from the United States of America, but the Lord still concerns himself with these matters. So as he says it, I write it down and basically uh, pray on it and then speak on it. So basically I wanted to share that with you as well, because if it's important to God important to say it's very simple if it's important to god it's important to say you see it's not about what we want to say you see when we are speaking words from the lord it's not about what we want or we like or we don't like or it's about truly what the lord has to say and yes you see parts of this nation under judgment but israel lived in the land of egypt when egypt was under judgment they witnessed the judgment. They went through the judgment. They watched it by God during that time. And we are kind of in a way living in a similar time here. We are seeing judgment. We are seeing pressure and we're witnessing it and we're living through it. But the remnant is being protected by almighty God under his covering, under his taba, under his ark. He is protecting us. He is our sustainer. The world system is not our sustainer. God can utilize what goes on in this world for his glory. But God ultimately is the one who sustains us, gives us the wisdom, forewarns us, teaches us, guides us, gives us wisdom. This is why we have to seek him for these things because we live in a very corrupt, convoluted world system. And the Lord can use the most unlikeliest of men, of women, of things to accomplish his purposes. The most unlikely, overlooked, just people just don't even get it. And he can use it for his purposes and his glory. And so a good example of that biblically is what Ahab and Jezebel ruled, Obadiah, Man of God, feared God, loved God, worked in their court. He worked for Ahab and Jezebel. And he took their bread and their water and their resources that they got corruptly. He took it and he fed the hundred prophets, 50 in each cave, and kept them alive until the showdown at Mount Carmel. So he took the resources of two of the most wicked people that ever lived that they got from wicked, corrupt means, and he used it for the glory of God. You see, God can take the resources from the corrupt and give it to you because he knows you'll take it and do with it what he tells you to do. And the reason why he may not be giving it to somebody else is because they're not listening and they're not going to do with it what he wants done. Like when the Lord said to me, you have to start an animal sanctuary. God has a purpose for that that is so much greater than just saving animals, although he does love his creation. He does. That's why he created them, because they give him pleasure. He loves them. Uh, you know what I mean? They are his creation. They are of his, You know what I mean? God is the greatest creator. He thought of all of those animals himself and spoke it, and there they were. And so, but it serves a greater purpose than that. Because watching these animals come from bad circumstances, watching the Lord take compassion on them, watching us care for them, it ends up giving people hope and drawing them closer to the Lord. They're a testament to who God is, and they serve a far greater purpose 
than just being dumb animals, as people would like to think. A far greater purpose, because God can use, he used ravens, unclean animals. Now think about this for a minute. He used an unclean animal, a raven, to feed Elijah in the wilderness, to bring him meat and bread every day, right? Where the ravens get it from? We don't know, but ravens are known to be incredibly intelligent and to be little thieves. So they probably stole it from somebody that God said, you know what? They they are corrupt. Just take it from them, you know? But he used an unclean animal to feed Elijah. God's making a point here. That raven was obeying instruction in that moment, that unclean bird better than Elijah was. Think about that for a minute. That unclean bird knew who his master was and obeyed instruction better when it came down to it than Elijah initially did. So when you think about it, you know, the, the genius of God, God used unclean animals across scripture. And there's a whole list of unclean animals. And guess what? I think dogs are on that list too, but everybody's got them. You see what I mean? It's God said they may be unclean to eat, okay? But when it came to saving them, they were all in the ark. They were all there together. And and animals recognized God and his instruction in scripture many times better than man did. So God is teaching man a lesson through that. God is teaching man a lesson through that. So I just, I just find it uh, interesting. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is because When God calls you to do something, it is for a purpose. It is your call. Someone may want to, you know, criticize your call, but guess what? They can't because they weren't called to do it. They weren't called to do it. They didn't have the set of, um, uh, you know, of qualifications and qualities that God needed to do that. So he called you. God uses the most unlikeliest of men and women and raises them up to do his will. The most unlikely, just people would never, I mean, when Paul, when Saul became Paul and got saved, the disciples, the apostles didn't know what was going on. They didn't know whether to try. They didn't know what was going on because it was so radical. He goes from killing Christians to wanting to preach the gospel. That is a huge 180 swing of the pendulum. You know what I mean? So... God uses the most unlikely of people in the most unlikely of ways that are peculiar. And those that don't understand the ways of God don't get it because we're called to be a peculiar people. God says we're called to be peculiar. Peculiar doesn't mean normal, you know. Peculiar means just what it sounds like. We are called in a way to be an oddity and an enigma to the world. Jesus was that to the Pharisees, frustrated them to no end because they could not wrap their minds around his call. They didn't want to get it. They didn't want to be upstaged. They did not want to deal with, with it, trying to explain all the miracles he was doing, they didn't want to deal with any of it. Jesus was born in a manger surrounded by animals. Surrounded. Humble, humble birth in a manger that have to do... A manger is this little box I believe they used to put sheep in and wrap them. Um, I believe they were special sheep put aside for sacrifices as well. They were put in the manger first. So, and I will double check that for you. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you that if the Lord is calling you to do something, it's because you have the set of qualifications to do it. Somebody else may not. And if they don't have the set of qualifications to do it and they can't walk that out, then they have to be real careful what they say about it because we are called By God, we are fearfully, wonderfully made. We are unique. And we each have a job in this world to do for the kingdom and the glory of God. 
because there's a lot of different kinds of people out there that need to be reached. And there's a lot that needs to be done on the earth for God and his glory and his purposes. And so we have to remember that we're all called to do something different. Uh, in the army, not everybody has the same position. Not everybody's a tank driver. And the, that causes them to do the job they've been chosen for well. And if everybody was a tank driver, we'd be in trouble because there'd be nobody in the Air Force to fly the planes. There would be no special ops. There would, see what I mean? Everybody needs to fill the position in order to have a whole functioning army. And the kingdom of God is that each have a function to fulfill in order to make a complete army. And in order for that army to function well, to function well. So it's, it, you know what I mean? Someone just wrote their fed because they got to be alert to do the job they're doing at sea to protect this nation. So it's all important. It will set because you may have gifts and talents and abilities and you're really good at it, but it doesn't mean what you were created for. They were put in you to all work together to do what you were created to do. And so we have to remember that we all have different gifts, talents, and abilities that were put in us so we could line up with what the Lord has spoken from heaven about us and do what he has created us to do. And it's unique and it's different. And we all have a different call. And it's an ode to, to, to the incredible God that he is, that he could equip so many different people with so many different gifts and abilities to be used for his kingdom. And yes, the enemy tries to hijack those. The enemy tries to take those. The enemy tries to throw confusion. But when you let the Lord go before you and you let him order your steps and you stay on that path, because it's not always going to be easy. You have victory. You have victory. The enemy may try to form a weapon against you. It does against you shall prosper. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it is an honor to serve the Lord. It is an honor to be able to bring glory to his name because he deserves it. He deserves all the glory, honor, and praise. We're just vessels. I mean, we're dust without his spirit in us. Forget it. Without his breath of life in us, we're dust. We're nothing. So we have to remember who our creator is. See, the animals know who their master is. We have to know who our creator is. And we have to submit to that and let him lead and guide us, especially when it gets difficult. And even when it's good, you still got to put in the same effort and the same work and the same, because this is what we're called to do. And we're called to be a light in the nation right now, in a nation that has a lot of judgment and issues going on and change that is set to happen in this nation. We are called to be salt. We are called to be light. We are called to boldly speak the truth of Almighty God in the midst of the storms that are happening in this nation. We are called to boldly speak what the Lord has to say in this hour. And the Lord has a lot to say. He's not, you know what I mean? He's not a broken record. He's got a lot to say about a lot of things. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he repeats himself over and over and over again because he's trying to drive a point home. But he's the Alpha and Omega. He sees a lot. He sees more than we ever will see. And we're just privileged that he shares any of it with us. So praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This is where I think I'm going to end. Um, this is where I think I'm going to end right here. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. Keep the faith to God be all the glory. He deserves it. He is awesome. He is amazing. And it is an honor to serve him. And he will see this nation through this. A lot's got to happen, but he will see this nation through this. So, uh, you know, the word of God says, when you hear of war of that nature, this is the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. So we have to concern ourselves more with doing the job at hand God has called us to do than when the end is truly coming because the end's going to come when it comes our job is to occupy and do the work God has called us to do till that time that is our job so keep the faith we love you uh 
I love being able to come on here. We're going to put, I'm just going to put one of these up really quick here. I'm just going to put Andrew up real quick, Beverly Hills Precious Metals. And also, uh, we're going to look and see when we can have a few people back on uh, to discuss some things. Dr. Sherwood may be one of them. We'll see when we can get Dr. Sherwood back on as well. And uh, that's it. God bless everybody. And I'll see you on Grace and Glory in a few minutes. Have a wonderful rest of your day.